Johnson, Chair-Elect of the X Rail Foundation. During Black History Month, we honor our history and we look forward to our future. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing two fellows of the Society of Actuaries who are also outstanding Black actuaries, who are possibility models and action figures. Possibility models based on what they have achieved and more importantly, how they achieved it. Action figures in the sense that they have done the work, faced the challenges, joined hands with and lifted others along the way. For this special edition of SOA Thanks, a video series featuring SOA volunteers telling their stories of leadership and volunteerism, these stories help us all to understand actuaries, how they drive solutions to life's financial risks, and how their personal and professional journeys shaped them and impacted their careers. These stories also demonstrate the values of the Society of Actuaries, integrity, excellence, and curiosity. The first possibility model is John Robinson, who recently retired as an actuary with the Minnesota Department of Commerce, where he provided actuarial support in the reviews of life insurance and annuity product filings. He also previously served as a member of the Society of Actuaries Board of Directors, the Society of Actuaries Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee, and the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Research Advisory Committee. John also previously served as president of the International Association of Black Actuaries, and I benefited from his leadership there. John is currently the president-elect and vice chair of the Society of Actuaries. The next possibility model is Stafford Thompson Jr., who is Senior Vice President of Life and Executive Benefits Business Management at Lincoln Financial Group. He is a fellow of the Society of Actuaries, a member of the American Academy of Actuaries, and a founding member and former president of the International Association of Black Actuaries. I'm also very proud of the fact that Stafford previously served as the Chief Actuary for North Carolina Mutual, which was, which was established in 1899 to provide insurance for Black families. Stafford has been named one of the most influential Black executives in corporate America by Savoy Magazine. I am looking forward to hearing what John and Stafford will share with us today, and I know you are as well. Please enjoy this SOA Thanks series for Black History Month and beyond. Uh, first, want to thank Jeff Johnson for uh, the introduction of myself and John. Jeff is a former president of the International Association of Black Actuaries. He actually served before and after me. Uh, Jeff served two uh, non-consecutive terms as president of IABA. Um, always great to have a friend introduce us, so we're excited about that. want to welcome John Robinson to this SOA Thanks series uh, for Black History Month. Um, it's exciting to be here with uh, John. John is making history as he always has. And so we're just really excited about the fact that he's been elected the uh, president elect of the Society of Actuaries. And in October, he will become the president of the Society of Actuaries. And we're just thoroughly thrilled about that. So welcome, John. Exciting times. And it's good to be with you, my friend. Stafford, thank you very much. And, um, you know, we were, I was teasing you the other day about serving as president of the, of the IABA. And I said, I served longer than you. And then I found, I went and checked the records and that's not correct. <laughs> you, you and I each served four years. And actually, um, Jeff is, is, is top dog because as you know, he did two years and then three years. So he did five years. So he, he beat both of us. Yes, so, it did. <laughs> uh, it, it's certainly my privilege to, to, to be here. Um, you know, to be elected by my peers uh, is quite an honor, and and um, I, I I certainly value that, and and um, I intend to do the best that I can for the Society of Actuaries and 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 for for the people that that care about me as well. So um, I'm happy to have this opportunity uh, to be a part of Black History Month. Um, I'm hoping that there's a lot of people will watch this and enjoy. And I certainly intend to enjoy the next few minutes, um, even if it goes to hours, uh, chatting with Stafford today. Indeed, indeed. So I guess, John, they want us to talk about how we first met. And uh, hopefully your memory is better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> 
it, it actually isn't. Um, I, I remember going to my earliest contact with the IABA was probably 1995, going to Howard University. Those days, the IABA annual meeting was a one day on a Sunday. Right. And they would have a, a very nice breakfast. Um, then there'd be a keynote speaker. And, and that was about it. So there wasn't necessarily a whole lot of interaction among the among the participants other than, you know, enjoying the the presentation, wh whoever it might be. And then, of course, uh, over the years, it's become a whole weekend and a big production. So I, I don't exactly remember uh, when we might have met, but I do know certainly um, when you were president in 2002, and I was not elected to the IABA board, but as kind of like a friend of the board. Absolutely. And so I think um, that's probably when we had the most, uh, most initial contact um, uh, in our career. So if, I don't know if you have any earlier recollections than that. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. Um, and in fact, I didn't get back to the IABA until 96. I was, uh, we'll, we'll talk about when I first was there, but um, uh, took some time off and got back in 96 and haven't missed many meetings after that. Certainly, uh, my connection with the Caribbean Actual Association, um, you start to hear about this guy named John Robinson, you know, the, you know, the <laughs> folks over there in the U.S. So uh, it was right. always good to hear those stories. And then I guess when we started uh, really collecting names and building out the database, um, that's when the, the real legend and lore of John Robinson uh, <laughs> be, became evident to me. And so certainly as we were building that Friends of IBA, had to have you as a part so that you could certainly direct and help us keep the international and international okay. association of Black actuaries. So that was really important to me. So yeah, right. we've, uh, we, we certainly knew of each other before we knew each other. And now it's uh, certainly been a, a great connection 2002 and beyond. That's great. That's great. Um, well, let's let's move on to. Um, they, they, they gave us a list, list of questions that we want us to ask, and um, and the first one has to do with what's called an I am statement. And as I understand it, an I am statement is is a way to capture your essence uh, using four or five words that that define you. And so I'll I'll give it a start. I I know I've been asked this before, and. When I thought about it, I said, you know, the things, if I were going to choose four words to describe John Robinson, I'd probably say leader, actuary, family man, well, that's two, and Jamaican. And I think, um, you know, th those four words capture uh, pretty much what I would consider to be my, my essence. Um, uh, you know, Jamaican as opposed to Black, because it does convey a particular worldview. And I, I, I value that, um, and I, I, I am very proud of that. Um, and, uh, and family man, of course, is two words. I do host a Robinson family reunion every three years, and I manage family trees as well. So those, those would be my four years, my, my four words, if you'll allow me to extend it to five. So Stafford, tell me about you. What, what do you think is um, a best I, 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 I am statement for Stafford Thompson? Yeah, and John, as you know, I don't follow instructions all that well, so I doubt I'll stick to four myself, but uh, certainly Christian uh, would be the first one, then Black. Uh, I am a Black American, and so Black uh, very much defines who and what I am. Actuary, I tend to say that as country mathematician, but since I'm limited to words, we'll, <laughs> we'll <laughs> stick with actuary. And then if I had to do a final one, it would be uh, Omega Man. Um, my fraternity is a huge part of who I am and what I do. So, oh, is that is that national Omega? Actually, international. We have international. chapters in Ghana. We have chapters in Japan. We have chapters in uh, Dubai. Um, oh all of those, uh, and, and certainly, I can't, can't leave out father either. Uh, I got a nine-year-old daughter, and that's daddy's baby. So, uh, so you get any trips out of that one? Oh, yeah. 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 I went to Ghana just before the pandemic. I went to right. Dubai literally just before the pandemic, February of 20. Uh, we were in Dubai um, chartering that chapter. And uh, even last week, we chartered a chapter in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. So, wow. And I was That's down nice. there. That's yeah. nice. want to talk about is just sort of growing up uh, we, we, we're trying to give our, our viewers a, a, a history of, of, of where we've been where we're coming from yeah. uh, and, and hopefully a little touch of where we think we're going as well 
And so I, the, the most I know about you is that you went to Florida A&M at one point, and I, I don't know a whole lot other than that. So maybe start with, you know, where did you grow up and what sort of things did you aspire to uh, uh, as a young man growing up? Sure, sure, sure. So I actually was uh, raised in Tallahassee, Florida, mm -hmm. which is where Florida a and University is. And I uh, always had a strong mathematical aptitude. My father actually majored in mathematics when he was in college. Now, a different level of math back when he was in college, but he majored uh -huh. in math. And so I had that same propensity. So growing up, I wanted to be a mathematical statistician. Uh -huh. I was going to work for the government. That was what was in the seventh grade career book. You know, back then it was a career book. There wasn't uh -huh. a computer and that kind of stuff to look <laughs> it up on. It was a career book. Um, and $60,000 a year, cushy uh, government job, I was ready. Um, <laughs> my father then moved us to Alabama uh, oh. after my freshman year of high school and sitting in pre-calculus class, uh, somebody put a note in front of me, summer actuarial program. I said, Actually, uh -huh. who? <laughs> Actually, what? Uh -huh. uh, went and yeah. found out about uh, the profession and that's when I changed uh, after the summer of my uh, junior year in high school to wanting to be an actuary and then came back to Florida a m to uh, pursue that as a major. Florida a m had uh, mathematics with a concentration in actuarial science and a full right. scholarship. Now, you know, the money didn't hurt either. All right, so, exactly. Between those, yeah. uh, that that's kind of how I got started. But now, John, for those of us that know something about Jamaica, and my wife is Jamaican, so I know a mm -hmm. little bit of something about it, right? That Kingston is very different than Mandeville, and that St. <laughs> Elizabeth is very different than St. Catharines. That's right. Where in Jamaica did you grow up? Was it city or was it country? And kind of how did that direct your view and your aspirations? That's good. Uh, well, um, I grew up in Kingston, but the story starts in England. Um, I think one of the things that I joke about is that I'm probably the first SOA president with three passports. So <laughs> uh, my father, you, your father was good at math. My father was, the, and we have that in common. Mm -hmm. My father was the Jamaica scholar for 1948. Mm -hmm. And he decided to go to University of Cambridge in England. And so he went there, he had met my mother who was also Jamaican uh, before he left but they reconnected and they got married in 1952. I was born in Cambridge then in 1954. And daddy finished his PhD in mathematical physics uh, in 1955. So then we moved, his first job after getting his PhD was at the University of Toronto in Canada. So we, the three of us as a family moved to Canada. My two sisters were born in Toronto and um, uh, in 56 and 58. And then in 60, my parents separated. The marriage fell apart uh, irreconcilably. And my mother took the three of us to Jamaica. So that's how come, uh, Kingston, that's how come I, I ended up sort of growing up in Jamaica. Um, since that time, my sisters have moved back to, 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 to Canada. And, um, and so I still have a strong connection to Canada. In Jamaica, I went to high, you know, prep school. That's what we call elementary school, at least the one that you pay fees for. Um, primary is the one that you don't pay fees for. Um, so I went to prep school, high school, and then the University of the West Indies, where I did a special degree in mathematics. Um, later on, I did some, uh, I, I decided to do a master's in statistics. And it was during that time that, um, that I sort of decided to, to choose an actuarial career. Um, I think later on I'll, I'll, I'll mention how, you know, how and when I, I first heard of it, but I didn't really decide it until 1982, so I was then 28 years old, and I did my first SOE exam in Jacksonville, Florida. Wow. Um, I, I, growing up, really, what, what I thought I wanted to be was an accountant. Uh, one of my aunts was a chartered accountant, and I worked a couple of summers with her, and I thought that's what I wanted to do. And the other great passion of mine is teaching. I, I, I think I've concluded that even though I've been an actor for so many years, teaching is really, is, is, is in a way my first love. So, um, so, so, so I, 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 I did teach high school for three years, as I think I'll mention later on. Um, in high school, I was one of those people who was, would, would referee football games. Of course, I have to call it soccer here. 
Um, so I was kind of respected in high school for that sort of thing. Yes, wow. One of the first things I ever knew about you, besides the fact that you were an actuary, is that you actually played weekend football or soccer uh, <laughs> and, and ran up and down the field. That's no right. No what the temperature was, which was surprising to me, that it could be 32 degrees outside and you'd be out there in shorts running up and down the uh, football field as long as it wasn't snow or ice on the thing. So That's right. No, it, it, all over the world, soccer is a winter sport, which is, you know, so uh, I, I, I haven't, didn't have to play in England while I was there, but I guess you have to be properly dressed. <laughs> so Stafford, uh, we've talked a little bit about our origins and um, we, we've established a little commonality in terms of parents who were skilled at mathematics. Uh, let's talk about, you know, how we became actuaries. Um, what was the path that you took? I think you got as far as, as Florida a and And so what followed that? Yeah, so... Well, Florida and I mentioned I was on scholarship. Uh, Cigna was actually the sponsor of that scholarship. And so along with the scholarship came an internship uh, mm. to Cigna. Mm. And so right after my freshman year of college, I got a chance to do a real live internship uh, working at Cigna in their de dental business. So uh, working mm. for Claire Marie Birchall, I'll never forget that. And uh, Lotus One Two Three was the popular. We oh didn't know what Microsoft Excel was at that point. Mm -hmm, uh, that's so, right. Uh, it was uh, very, very interesting times. Uh, did an internship. Figured out that yeah, maybe I do have the chops to enjoy the work in addition to the math that it takes in order to become an actuary. Uh, went back for my se uh, second year at Florida a &M and then did a second internship at Prudential. Um, was in a hurry. I, I, I'm motivated by money, John. I don't mind admitting that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and so I decided to uh, graduate in three years as opposed to four. Mm. And so after okay. my third year in college, I went back to Cigna full time and joined their actual executive development program, which is kind of how my career was launched from there. And so really, really excited about the profession. Folks often ask if you had it to do over again, would you do over it again? And absolutely, I would. Um, it's been a fantastic journey. It's been really good to me. There were some tough times and we can certainly talk about the exam process and some of those, uh, the process of getting through uh, that and the support system that I had to have in order to get through that. But again, I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. The actual profession really has been good to me and for me. Uh, what about yourself? How'd you, how'd you get in this thing? Sure. But before that, where, where was Cigna located? Where, where, where was our yeah, office? Yeah, that's a great question. So Cigna was in Hartford, Connecticut. Okay. I'm All a right. Florida guy. Uh -huh. I, I grew up in Tallahassee. <laughs> and I lived in Alabama. Mm -hmm. So my first foray into Hartford, Connecticut, and my first nor'easter snowstorm and blizzard, <laughs> spinning out on the highway and winding up on a snowbank uh -huh. uh, was an interesting education into the north. But I was there for nine and a half years, so I must have learned something while I was there. All right. Well, good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, in my case, um, I the first person who ever shared anything with me about the actual profession was it was in 1973, a classmate of mine from Trinidad, he came up to, to do the, um, he was going to do a special degree in mathematics and economics at UA in Mona. And I was doing the special degree in mathematics. Um, and so we were classmates and he said, you know, John, I'm going to be an actor. I, I, I don't know what that is. But through him, I met, he, he spent a summer working for Daisy Cook, who I know you know well. And he briefly introduced me to her. Uh, but we didn't really talk about actuarial or, or, or anything, at least not that I remember um, at the time. And I, I wasn't really thinking about pursuing that profession. I was really just focused on trying to get through the degree and then see, see what came next. So um, after graduating from UA, I taught O-level and A-level maths. Um, A-level maths is kind of advanced in, in, the, in the US. They'll refer to it as AP or honors math. And it's for kids who are going to do mathematics in university. So, so this, the school, Excelsior High School, they, they gave me their best classes for O-level and A-level, which was quite a compliment to me. And I took them through, through uh, with, some, with a fair amount of success. So I taught high school for three years, as I mentioned earlier, and I, I still feel like teaching is my first love in some ways. Then I decided to do a master's. My question is what? Well, I, I, I and I chose statistics, and 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 that was really a, a huge um, 
a huge turning point and, and, and the thing that of course would have led me into actual science, although I didn't know it at the time. So I did a master's at the University of Delaware, um, moved on to Florida State. So I was in Tallahassee as well. Um, I, I, I thought maybe I'd like to do a PhD, I wasn't sure. And so I said, if I'm gonna do one, I'm gonna do one at one of the top statistics universities in the country and Florida State certainly was that at the time and I believe is still one of those. Uh, uh, but during the year I decided, no, I don't think I'll, I'll do the PhD. And I decided, in, I was thinking of going back to Jamaica. Now, one of the motivations for going back to Jamaica that you can relate to is that I had a Jamaican honey there waiting for me. And so, <laughs> so the question was, if I go back to, you know, where should I go to pursue this relationship? If I go back to Jamaica where she is, what, you know, what would I do? Actual, prefer ah, yes, I remembered that, you know, I'd heard about it. And so during the year I did my first SOA exam in Jacksonville, Florida. I got a 10 for the statistics course, which at that time was course two. I figured I'd, I'd do that one first. And, um, and then I went back to Jamaica and started working with our Watson and Sons. Okay. And um, people may not know that name, but that is the British firm that gave rise to Watson Wyatt and now is the current reincarnation, if you will, is Willis Towers Watson. So that's where I started in Jamaica. Yeah, that's very interesting, John, uh, particularly as you talked about Florida State and some of those pieces and the fact that it was the top statistical, uh, one of the top statistical universities in the country. I actually chose a historically black college and university, Florida a and and I say I chose it for the money, but I actually got into MIT and I got into Harvard and made the decision not to go to those schools. And part of it was my campus visit to Florida a and I met this guy named Kelly Carter. He was a freshman actuarial science major. And Kelly said, I almost failed the course. I said, Kelly, you almost failed? He said, yeah, I almost failed the course. I almost got a B. I said, oh, <laughs> big boys think B is failing. Uh -huh. These are the types of folks that I need to be around. And so with Kelly Carter, Isaac Chappelle in engineering, um, and, uh, little Isaac in physics, uh, you really surrounded yourself with top-notch people. And so mm -hmm. anybody that uh, ever looks at an HBCU education, it is one of the better educations that you can get in the country. And I stand by that.